Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I would like to welcome everybody to the webinar today. Uh, today's webinar is part uh, is the first one in a five-part series. It's specifically designed for new members or people that have never logged into BNI Connect before, whether you are a new member or a five-year member and just haven't given BNI Connect a shot yet. But what we'd like to do is to you know, go through the system in little short bursts, about a half hour each, and try to get you um, deeper into the system to learn all about it. Um, from how to fill out your profile, which is what we're gonna talk about today, we're also going to talk this week about how to pass online slips, so how to pass referrals online. We're going to go into the social media aspects of BNI Connect. We're going to dive really deep into the system and talk about the tools and reports. And finally, we'll look at how to use BNI Connect to really help with the visitor process. Um, again, today is the first part in that five-part series, and we're going to be talking about your profile in BNI Connect, how to fill it out, some uh, reasons why you want to fill it out, and how to fill it out, and some tips and tricks. Now, before we get started, um, I just want to go over a couple of housekeeping things with you. The first of which is that this is a live webinar. So what that means is that if you have any questions at all, whatsoever, as you're going through this material, please do feel free to ask those questions. You can ask those questions by typing the questions in to the question panel here in the GoToWebinar software. Uh, they'll pop up on my screen and I'll be able to answer them as we're going through the material today. Or if it's completely and totally unrelated, I will save up those questions to the end. Now that being said, uh, we're scheduled for about 30 minutes worth of content. I am always happy, however, to stay until every single question is answered, whether that takes 35 minutes, whether it takes 45 minutes, or whether it takes two hours. Um, I am happy to answer all of your questions, again, whether it has to do with the content from today or anything about BNI Connect. We will be recording this webinar. It'll be made available in a couple of different places, both on the support site, which I'll show you a little bit later, and also on our YouTube channel. If you do a YouTube search for BNI Connect Global, again, that's BNI Connect Global, you can find our YouTube channel, and that has all of our recorded content. So I'm going to start things off uh, differently. If you've ever looked at any of the recordings, I'm going to start things off a little bit differently today. And I want to give you guys kind of a brief overview of what BNI Connect is. Um, a lot of people, especially when they first log into BNI Connect, may not understand just how big of a product and a project it is. So I just want to give you a couple of quick uh, stats about BNI Connect. The first of which is, here's just a couple of numbers. Um, BNI Connect is currently, um, has 72 countries are in BNI Connect right now. Now, some of them are still developing countries. They are still looking to launch their first chapters. But right now, there are 72 countries in BNI Connect with about almost 1,000 regions um, around the world, over 7,000 chapters, 1,000 core groups. 39 country websites, 805 region websites, and nearly 7,000 chapter websites. 190,000 active users around the world. Now that is huge. Uh, BNI Connect is accessible to every single BNI member around the world. So that really takes things um, in a different perspective. It's not just about you in your chapter and the 20, 30, 40, 50 people that you meet with on a weekly basis, but it's also being able to connect with and possibly do business with all of these other people around the world that are part of the larger BNI family. There's also a number of groups. These are discussion groups in BNI Connect, and the great thing is, is that they are limited to just BNI people around the world. It is one application now. A lot of people call it a website. BNI Connect is not a website. It has a number of websites associated with it, but it is a web application. Um, very much like QuickBooks has an online application. This is kind of like QuickBooks plus LinkedIn for BNI chapters, regions, and members. Over a thousand individual pages, 120 reports, a million lines of code, and it is translated into 47 different languages right now. And those are all local languages. Unfortunately, because of our proprietary terms, um, we can't just use something like Google Translate. Um, it's all done manually. All 14,000 individual um, words, uh, sections within BNI Connect. So what makes this really important? It 
is the first time that we can really say that we are a local business global network and you can literally reach out and have a connection with anybody in the BNI world. Now, I'm, I'm also, by the way, I'm a BNI member. Um, not only am I the director of support globally, but I am a member. I still go to weekly meetings. Um, I am a member here in the Rhode Island region here in the United States. We meet on Thursday mornings at the Wakefield chapter. Now, when I first joined BNI 12 years ago, I didn't, I, I really wasn't even able to find the members that met in the chapters across town or across the state, let alone members in other parts of the world. Now with BNI Connect, I have access to, again, anybody around the globe, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a few minutes. So hopefully everybody's heard of the term VCP, and that is visibility leads to credibility, which then leads to profitability. Now, the reality is people are looking to pass you business. And one of the ways that we help to build VCP in BNI Connect is by filling out our profile, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I like to say there's a new formula, and that is VCP. We take that, we multiply the visibility and credibility by BNI Connect, and now we have exponential possibilities for profitability. So let's take a look at how this works in BNI Connect. Now, I'm not going to do a full half hour here of PowerPoint. Let's get out of the PowerPoint and let's take a look at BNI Connect. Now, this is the logged in portion, but one thing that you may or may not know is that your profile actually exists on up to three distinct URLs out there on the internet, on the regular internet that everybody in the world has access to. Now, one of those places is on the country website. Now, here in the United States, we have a website, BNIAmerica.com. Depending on what country you're from, you may have um, different websites for each country. But this has the profile of every member in the United States. And if I go and I click on Find a Member here, and I do a search, I can either do a search by keywords or categories, I can even do an advanced search here if I want to get very specific. I'm just going to go ahead and just search by my name so I make sure I find myself here. And the exact match, I am the only Jeremy Walsh here in the United States. And if I click on that, this will bring up my profile. And this is my BNI Connect profile. It has my name, it has my phone numbers, ways to get in touch with me. It has all of the different um, things about my business. I even embedded a video in there, all my social media links. This is called the TOPS profile and also the ability to send me a message. So all of this is part of the public profile that's out there on the internet. And as I said, every single member out there has one of these profiles. But as I mentioned, there's two other places on the public internet that we can find member profiles. The second one is on my personal region. Now, I'm in the Rhode Island region. Now, if you don't know where your region is, you can always click on this regions here at BNI America, find your particular region, or you can just go to the site. I'm going to go to BNIRI.com. And if I go to find a member here, and I search for myself once again. You can see it's the same profile. It has still my social media links, my phone numbers, my address, everything that somebody would need to get in touch with me, and also to help to build my visibility and credibility. Now, the final place is on your chapter website. And every single person out there um, has a chapter website. That is part of the regional website, but it is a distinct URL here with a distinct page. And if I go to meet our members here and I click on my particular profile, this is the same profile. Now, these are all updated automatically when you update your profile in BNI Connect. So let's take a look at the inside of BNI Connect. To get there, you can always click on the BNI Connect button from any of those other websites or just go to bniconnect.com and log in. Now, once you're logged in, you will see this. This is the home page. This is the first screen that you'll see. 
If you'd like to see what your profile looks like before doing anything else, what you can do is either search for yourself using this magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner, or if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you can see a button here that says profile. So I'm just going to go to this search here real quick, and I'm going to search for myself. And now this right here is the inside of BNI Connect. So this is a tool that only other BNI people around the world can use. Currently about 190,000 people around the world can utilize BNI Connect here. And if I do a search for myself, once again, Jeremy Walsh is going to return these results. Now this profile is the inside, the member to member profile, which is a little bit different than the external profile. It's different in that we share a little bit more information with other BNI members than we do with the general public. So aside from some of the typical things, it does still have my My Business and that video that I embedded and my logo and my picture. It also shows you all the different ways that I'm involved in BNI. If I scroll down, it will list my keywords. So this gives you a little bit more insight into what I do and how I do it. On the inside only, you have the option to actually share your email address. If you remember on the outside, you can send a message, but we will never share your email address with the general public. But if you choose to, you can share that to other people within BNI. It still has all my social media links. It has my address, but what's unique about this inside profile is that it has all these tabs along the top. And what I can do is I can look at, for example, the bio tab. And people can read my weekly presentations. You can also embed a video in there as well. They can read my gains profile. So that means that before a one-to-one, -one, we can much more easily do a gains exchange where we're reading about each other's goals and accomplishments and interests and networks and skills, which really helps to turbocharge that one-to-one -one when you sit down with somebody. And then finally, the tops profile here. But wait, there's more. You can also see all the people that I'm connected to. Um, so similar to LinkedIn, where you can view people's first and second and third level connections, you can do the same thing here in BNI Connect. You can see all of my connections, but you can browse infinitely uh, through those connections if you would like to and view the people that they're connected to and they're connected to and they're connected to. We also share testimonials here within BNI Connect. And you can read all of these credibility building testimonials. There's also a photo sharing library where you can share anything from uh, gratuitous photos of your children to uh, company logos, even to testimonials from clients. You can see which groups I'm participating in. And finally, one last boost to credibility, and that is the training history. So how do we go about and update all of this information now? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If you're here on your profile, you can click on this Update Profile My BNI page. Alternatively, from any page within BNI Connect, click on the Options button in the upper right-hand corner and go to My Account. And then finally, uh, if, I, if you're just logged in and you're on your home page, I'm just going to go back to the home screen here. Right here in this top bar, you'll see Update Profile My BNI Page. All three of those, those links will take you to the exact same place. So you notice that the profile here is laid out similar to the view of the profile when you're looking at other people's profiles. And that is that it's broken into a number of tabs along the top. We have the main profile, the user profile, the contact details, account settings, bio. If you happen to be a director consultant, you'll have a director profile as well, and then a training history. So we're just going to take a few minutes and go through these different tabs and hopefully give you some insight on what to put in here and how to update these things. Now the first part of this is the main profile. Um, this is going to have your basic membership information, such as your name and your company name. Um, in a lot of places, you won't be able to update that automatically. Um, in order to update it, you do need to usually submit that to your regional office. And 
just so you know, the reason for that is that you know, your membership application is essentially a contract with your chapter and with BNI. So we need to make sure that that paperwork matches what is in the system. So a lot of times you'll see a request change. Now in the United States, you can feel free to ignore these next couple of fields, and that is the registered tax office and the VAT reference number. Um, both of those are required fields in some other countries. For example, I believe Australia needs the registered tax office. Um, some places in Europe need to list the VAT reference number as well. But here in the United States, you can leave those blank. Uh, the same thing with the industry and classification and chapter. Again, those are going to match what's on your application. If you find that there's an error with any of those, please just contact your regional office, your regional admin, your director consultant, or your executive director. They can all help you um, get those modified if need be. Let's go down to the bottom two fields here, and this is real, where we really need to start spending a couple of minutes. And the first one is the My Business description. Now, the My Business description, I always look at that as kind of your elevator pitch. So if you think about your, um, go to your chapter meeting, and you have the open networking portion of the chapter meeting, that first 15 minutes of the meeting, where you're it more informally going around and talking with people. That is essentially what this My Business description is. It's, it's a way to explain your business in a short, concise fashion. Usually I say not to put more than a couple of sentences, maybe a paragraph here, because most people don't read much more than that when they're quickly browsing through on the websites. The other thing is that you can also insert HTML code into this one particular field. It's disallowed in the rest of the system, but it is allowed in the My Business. So if you need to do things like you know, do some markup of it to make it bold, or um, if you wanted to embed a video, for example, you can embed a video. Now the video does have to be hosted somewhere else, such as YouTube or Vimeo or a place like that, but really all you need to do is to grab the embed code and you can paste it into the My Business. If you'd like more information about that, um, what I'd say is just drop a question into the questions panel, and at the end of the webinar today, I can go into detail and show you an example of exactly how that works. <clears throat> now the bottom section is keywords, and keywords are incredibly important because it's how people are going to find you when they don't know your name. Now, when I did a search for myself, I obviously know my name, so it's easiest to always search by name. However, there may be times, and one of the powerful things about BNI Connect is that you can look for people in other places based on their categories and keywords. So, for example, if you have a grandmother in Florida, or you have your old college roommate, that lives in Colorado. <clears throat> the great thing about BNI, I mean, we talk about VCP, but we all start off with just a little bit more credibility than somebody that you just might randomly find on Google or Craigslist or Angie's List or um, any of these other, you know, Yelp, these other sites that are out there. Because everywhere we go in BNI, we have the same you know, the same standards. that Everybody has a membership committee that's monitoring the chapter and holding members accountable to their actions. So why not, when you have a need, even if it's somebody that's not local, why not to turn to BNI? But the way people are going to find you is by those keywords. Now, when you do a search in BNI Connect, it is a database search. So you have to keep in mind that it's looking against, you know, really for exact matches against the words that are in the system. And it's going to search for your industry, your classification. It's going to search your address and your name. But the keywords is where you really need to supplement all of those things. A couple of techniques for that. Um, do make sure that you are putting in different versions of the word. For example, if you're a bookkeeper, you need to make sure that you have bookkeeper and bookkeeping in the keywords. That way, whichever word people search for, it will find you. Another technique is um, because it's going to search your address and by default your state that you're listed in that address, 
if you happen to do business in other cities and other towns and other counties and other states, you may want to list those there as well. Um, for example, uh, I live in Rhode Island. Uh, for any of you that don't know, Rhode Island is the smallest state in the United States. Um, it's only 20 miles wide by 40 miles long. And what that means is that many people do business outside of the 800 square miles of Rhode Island, um, considering it only takes about 40 minutes to drive across the entire state. So in my keywords, I put in the abbreviations for Massachusetts and Connecticut. So if anybody's looking for you know, my business descriptions and they happen to put in Massachusetts or Connecticut, we'll find they'll find me there as well, and I may get the referral for that. If you've made any changes to anything here, make sure you click the Update button. That will make sure it saves this data, and let's move on to the next tab. And the next tab is the User Profile tab. This is uh, pretty straightforward. It's really just your username, your password, you can you can make your username anything you want it to be. It does not have to be your email address. I actually recommend it's not your email address. Um, you can really put anything you want and change it anytime you'd like to, as long as it is unique in the system. The question and answer, you will need to answer uh, the memorable question if you ever need to reset your password. So, for example, if I open up another browser here, if there's anybody in your chapter, that has forgotten their password and needs to log back into BNI Connect, just have them click on the forgot password or username link here. They just need to put the email address that is on their profile and the CAPTCHA code. This is going to then ask me my question. So this is the same question that is listed here. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? I need to answer that question correctly and that would allow me to then go ahead and reset my password. You can also choose your language. As I mentioned before, there are 47 different languages, including about a dozen different versions of English in BNI Connect, your time zone, and of course you can upload a profile picture and company logo. If you haven't done so already, you can always upload it by clicking Change Company Logo and then clicking this little magnifying glass. From here, I just need to go and find a new logo. So I'm browsing my computer right now for another logo, and I think I'm gonna switch this over to the black version of it. I can crop this if I want to, and then go ahead and click Save. And now my profile is updated with that other company logo. Going on to the next tab. Now, the next tab, the most important thing on this contact details tab is this top line right here. And it says, show me on the BNI public websites. If you want to be found on those public websites, the regional website, the chapter website, and the country website, bniamerica.com here in the United States, you absolutely have to have a check mark in that top box. If you do not have a check mark in it, you will not be listed and you will not be searchable on those public websites. So please make sure to have a check box in there if you would like to be found. Now that is an overriding setting. However, you can be more selective once you've said, yes, I do want to be found. Down the right hand side, you can choose what other pieces of information you'd like to share on those public websites. You can share your phone or not, you can share your mobile number or not, and all the rest of the information here as well. Now you can also put in a number of social media links. One thing that I do get asked of a lot is, uh, well, what if I have more than one Facebook? My recommendation is just use one of these other ones from the drop-down box. You know, for example, you can see I put my second Facebook page under a Sun Tzu account. You know, it's not really it's just a label, and the label actually doesn't show up on the website, so that's why I've gone through and put my additional ones under those other headers. The bottom section is the address. Um, your, you get to choose which of those addresses are going to appear on the public website, 
or none of them. And you can also, of course, choose if you if you would like at least your city and your state to appear, but you maybe you work from home and you don't want to share your home address publicly, you can always put in, in that address line one, by appointment only. And that would allow you to um, still share, for example, your city and your state and your country and your zip code, but not share your home address. Of course, click update if you made any changes. Now, we just talked about the public website sharing options. This is the member-to-member -member sharing options, and this is the account settings tab. So you can choose which of those tabs you share with people here within BNI Connect, so with other BNI people around the world. You have three choices. You can share these parts either with everybody, which is my personal recommendation, and this is what I do. I share everything with everybody. You can choose to only share certain details once you are connected with them. So that means they have to send you a connection request. You have to accept that connection request or you know, vice versa. You send them a connection request and they accept it. But only after you're connected will you share those details. Or you can choose to completely hide those details from everybody. The reason that I say to, and the reason I put this to all, is that a lot of times when people are looking for services, they're not going to, they, they need those services right away, or they need to make that referral right away. They're not going to wait until you've said yes to the connection request. Now, again, this isn't, you know, LinkedIn or Facebook where there's millions and millions and millions of people. Um, this is a pretty small group of uh, you know, dedicated BNI people, so I feel comfortable sharing my details. Again, that's just a personal opinion. Um, going down, if you decide to participate in the groups, you can choose how often you would like a notification when those groups get updated, either every time a new post is added, once per day, once per week, or you can opt out completely. Um, if you are running your own groups, and every member can run up to seven of their own groups, um, I do recommend at least to start with um, using the every time a post is added. That way you can um, respond quickly when somebody makes a comment. Now, down at the bottom, you can choose to forward some of your social media interactions within BNI Connect to um, your personal email address if you'd like to, such as connection requests and testimonial requests. That will not affect, by the way, any emails that are coming from the regional office or any of the automated emails um, that happen within the system. Those will all go to your regular email address. This is, again, just for some of these social media interactions. The next tab is the bio. Um, most of this is fairly straightforward, but this is one where it will take you just a little bit of time to take the efforts to fill these out because there's a lot of fields on here. The first part is the bio. This is the traditional bio that we've always filled out before a 10-minute presentation at the chapter. So it's your years in business and your previous types of jobs, spouse, children, pets, things like that. Um, again, very standard form here in BNI. The nice part about this is once you fill it out here, you don't have to worry about your secretary treasurer chasing you down before you're up for your next presentation because it will be here. The only thing you may want to do is go in there and update it every now and again to refresh it with new information. <clears throat> the next two sections, weekly presentation one and two, again, you can type out a couple of weekly presentations. Now, why would you want to take the time to do that? One of the reasons is, as I've been saying, 190,000 people here in BNI Connect. I can guarantee you that 189,950 of them or so will never be at one of your BNI meetings. It is a good opportunity to share what it is you're looking for, what you would normally give as a weekly presentation to your members to a much larger audience. And by the way, this is the one other place where you can embed a video. And uh, Deep T, I do have your note there, and um, I will show you in detail how to do that in just a few minutes. The next two sections, the gains profile, goals, accomplishments, interest, networks, and skills. Again, this is information we should be sharing with other members before we have a one-to-one. -one. And finally, the TOPS profile, which is the ideal referral, top product, top problem solved, favored BNI story, and ideal referral partner. Now, this one is important if you have a limited amount of time, like you're going to start this right now, but you have another appointment to get to at 4 o'clock, 
what I would say is to fill the TOPS profile out first and make sure you save it. And the reason I say to do this one first is because this one appears on the public website. So this one appears on BNIAmerica.com and on your regional site and on your chapter site. So that means that Google is indexing these and you know it's that much more credibility to that wider of an audience. All right, now the last couple of tabs, if you are a director, you have the opportunity to put in specific director information and your training history. Now the training history, you, um, you, you're not able to update that. That gets automatically updated as you attend various events and training courses within your area. If you see that something's missing there, let's say that you took the member success program last week and it, it doesn't seem to be in there, all you need to do is to contact your office. It's most likely they just haven't updated the attendance, or maybe they were uh, storing the attendance somewhere else and they can just manually add it to your profile. And that is it. That is the member profile. Um, so we do have some questions coming in. I would absolutely uh, like to answer all of those questions. Uh, we are at the bottom of the hour, so that means that anybody that needs to leave right away, I just wanted to thank you for being here. Let me show you where the recordings are going to be. Um, again, I am going to answer all of the questions momentarily. Um, as I said, this is being recorded. You can find it on the support site. That's the easiest place to find it. So if you click on this question mark up here from any page, just click on this question mark in the upper right-hand corner. What that's going to do is take you over to the support site. And on that support site, you will find all of the webinars. So the first thing you'll see, this is a search, so you can search any of the help documents. But this is the list of upcoming webinars. And you can see the recorded webinar series. So you can click through to September. You will see an October one here momentarily. Well, not momentarily, but hopefully uh, within a day or so, I will get yesterday's and today's webinar uploaded, as well as the links to all of the upcoming webinars. By the way, a great referral for me is to please refer this series of webinars to any other people that you might know in BNI, so other chapter members, other people in your region. If you scroll down, you'll also find tons of documentation for example, chapter training, how to do various things throughout the system, and you'll also see the recorded webinars down here as well. Uh, so take some time to browse through the support site. And if you um, also would like to, you can find our YouTube channel. Um, again, that is youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. And up here, BNI Connect Global, you will find all of our recorded content. So not just today's webinar and last month's webinars, we have all the webinars going back to when we first started doing them. Uh, you'll also see all the educational moments. Uh, these are short three to five minute videos uh, where you can use them as an education moment in your chapters as well. If you'd like to know when um, new videos are updated, just make sure you subscribe as well. So let's go back to some of the uh, questions that you guys had. And it looks like we just have a couple of questions. Uh, let's take a look at the video, the video aspect of this. So the video aspect of this, uh, what's, what you need to do first is to, you know, if you don't have a YouTube account or a Vimeo account or something like that, you need to create one. Um, it's free, it's easy, you don't really have to pay for you know, any of the advanced functionality of it. Even the YouTube channel that I have here for BNI Connect is a free version of it and you can upload hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos. So the first step is to do that and then to go up and upload a video. Once you have the video uploaded, just go to where you would go when if you were just gonna watch that video. So for example, I'm just gonna go to this uh, BNI Connect education moment. I'm not gonna watch it right now, but all you need to do is scroll down a little bit and one of the options should be share. Now you don't want this link. This link is just the regular link. If you were just going to drop that in an email or something like that, what you want is called the embed code. And it does this automatically. You don't have to sign up for anything special. It will give you an embed code. And this is what's used to actually stick the whole video into a website somewhere. 
Now you can just copy this as is and paste it into BNI Connect. However, I do recommend you take one additional step and that is you click the show more button and you might want to shrink the size down to about 300 pixels wide. And the reason for that is just that the 400 will extend beyond the width of your profile. So you may want to just drop that down. It will update the code for you automatically, so you don't have to worry about that part of it. I'm just going to highlight everything. I'm going to copy this. Go back to my profile. Let me go back to Options, My Account. <clears throat> And again, all I need to do is paste that into the My Business. So let me take out everything that's in there currently. And I'm going to go ahead and put just this iframe in with a check out my video. And I'm going to go ahead and click Update. I'm going to click Profile to go over and view my profile. And now you just see, check out my video. It had that little iframe code in there. And that's really, that's all there is to it. So uh, Drew and Deepti, does that answer your questions there? Excellent. All right, and again, it's the exact same process for that, um, yeah, you know, for the 60-second commercials. Uh, by the way, uh, if you are an advanced HTML person, uh, I'm not, by the way, <laughs> um, but you can, uh, just so you can see what the entire code of my my business looks like, you can do things like create a bullet list and put bold and do paragraph breaks and all that type of thing. All I did was use a free HTML program, type that out, and then copy and paste the code. Um, just, again, I am not a HTML programmer. I just grabbed that from another source. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in my profile and update it. All right, so hopefully that helped, guys. Um, Christina says, how do we uh, link, uh, put in the Facebook and LinkedIn accounts? So those are slightly different. For those, uh, for example, um, these are all going to be here. What you need to do is, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take my Facebook one out and save it. So if I want to add the Facebook in again, what I would do is click on Facebook, Facebook and then click Add. Right, and you see it comes up with a blank thing there. So now what I need to do is go to Facebook, and the easiest thing to do is just click on your own account here, and this gives you the link, facebook.com, and my account is TRC Jeremy. So from here, I'm going to go and just paste that in. Now here's one little just advanced trick for you. Um, because the public websites are an HTTP, not HTTPS, I recommend taking out that S, and that will allow that little Facebook icon to appear on the public profiles. So it's the same for LinkedIn and all the rest of them. You just need to know your all of them have a URL that goes to your account. So does that uh? That does that answer your question, Christina? All right, so Valerie says, what if you do business in all of the United States? Uh, any suggestions? Um, you are limited in your keywords um, to only, I believe it's uh, 200 characters, and that's just to make it fair to everybody that's using these features. Um, I would say choose the ones that are most important for you. Um, you know, some people may not search by state when they do that. Um, they may just be putting in the keywords. So the keywords are just as important as putting in the geographical locations. But um, unfortunately, I mean, you could go and put in the two-letter abbreviations for every state. That would be, you know, about 150 
of your 200 characters. Um, that will be a, kind of a business decision on your part. Does that help a little bit, Val Valerie? All right. Um, I think that's the only other question I had. We have a comment from Drew that says, I like this feature and the My BNI business part. Uh, EJ just says, thank you. All right. Do we have any other questions? Any other questions at all? I'd be happy to answer those questions. All right, everyone, if there are no additional questions, I'd like to thank everybody so much for being here today. Just a reminder, our next webinar, and a good referral for me, our next webinar is tomorrow, and this one is specifically for leadership teams. We're going to be talking about all the different leadership team tools and reports and how to do things like enter POMS reports and um, schedule speakers and some of the advanced reports in the system. The next one in this series for new members is going to be on Thursday, Thursday at this time, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 Pacific. We are going to be talking about how to give and track referrals online. So please do sign up for that one if you'd like to learn more about the referral process. Oh, we do have a last minute question here. B says, uh, can I go in and make changes without them going to everyone until I'm completed? Um, not with this, not with the profile. Once you click save, it will be released to the public immediately. So there is no, um, you know, unlike a, a web page where you're designing a web page uh, that has, you know, the offline copy, this does not have that. You just have to uh, be ready and click save which is actually a good thing, means it's not cached and uh, updates quicker. All right. Cool. I think that's all I have. So thank you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Happy connecting, everyone.